Acting Senior Director of Marketing, Production and Special Projects, Mr. Vaughan Barnaby of the Rural Agricultural Development Authority opened the second session of the summit under the theme Traditional Crop Production. We go now to his opening remarks. The situation with our traditional crops has seen over the years a loss of preferential markets. Coming out of British colonials, we had preferential markets within UK for bananas or coffee or sugar. And over the years, because of the shift in what we I prefer, like to call our new trade liberalization sector, we have seen where we have lost that, that preferential agreements. So we are now left to compete with, with our bananas, with Chiquiquita from Central America. And the whole banana sector has been changing globally. Data out of 2012 shows that there has been a shift from South America being the top exporter of banana to Central America being the top exporter. So growth in banana export out of Central America on the global market has increased. So in essence, the demand is there, and I have to be sure, the demand is there. The question that we must answer at this conference is, how do we know, seeing that there is demand, come up with appropriate strategies to go forward to ensure that the sector and the farmers of this country can achieve their full potential? Irrigation improves crop quality. It is effective in the management of crop water needs in that water is supply as needed. An example of that is drip irrigation where water is delivered drop by drop to the um, root of the plant. Other benefits of irrigation, it incre increases opportunities for double cropping and it provides a means of liquid fertilizer application. And the added benefits of that, possible reduction in fertilizer use and reduction in production costs. The AgriParch initiative, the work we have done to date, um, has greatly facilitated agricultural development in those agroparks. And NIC has also benefited by the growth of our customer base as a result of this initiative. Our farmer engagement has improved. Um, the on-farm water management unit that we have has been very active in terms of farming engagement in the activities and services that we provide, um, such as farm visit and advisory services, training, installation of um, small irrigation system, and some special product, projects that we undertake, such as the establishment of rainwater harvesting and um, utilization facilities. My talk this afternoon is on the banana industry. I'm looking at key drivers and how these drivers will increase food production. How does it fit into food security? Quickly, it's a good source of vitamins and minerals as well as fiber. It's high in potassium, which is an essential mineral for maintaining normal blood pressure. So why is the banana important in national food security? Again, the nutritional content is very high. Jamaica has an enviable track record of producing high-quality bananas. It's compatible with a wide range of farming systems. For example, you know we, can, we use it as a shade for cocoa and so on. So it is very compatible with many different systems at the small and even at the large scale farming. It's adaptable to a wide range of climatic and edaphic conditions. So whether it's on the plains, whether it's on sloping land, you can cultivate it. And of course, I've been talking about bananas, but it also includes planting as well. So please make a note of that. Of course, in the in further field, we are also looking at nutraceuticals and functional foods and so on. We are starting to do extractions and so on. And the craft is also being looked at, although it's not a part of the agro-processing facility. 
But of course, the bark and the leaves and so on, the pseudo stem and all of that, where, what can we do with all of that? So we are looking at that as well. I would like to pose two questions. First one is, is this country serious about agriculture? And the second one is, are we serious about agriculture? In the first place, we would need to recognize that this country is not Kingston. And therefore, all the visionaries and the planners that are brought to bear in our situation and the need to increase production come mainly from the sectors of goods and services, the financial sector, and there is not, to my knowledge, any representation of any seriousness from the agricultural sector. I know because I have been to the minister about it. And he picked up his phone and he called whoever it was he called and instructed that we should be included. And that instruction fell through the phone, died at the other end, and was never implemented. And therefore, we have to assume that this country which thrives on agriculture, which financial institutions are fed on the processes of agriculture, is serious about agriculture, but without a voice in the planning. Because nowhere can it be said that there is a reflection on this seriousness in the way forward and the vision for our economy. The percentage of money that goes into rural banks that comes from agriculture is vastly the majority of their funding. Reflect against that the percentage that goes back into those agriculture sectors in the form of loans. I want to pose these questions because when you come out of here, if you come out of here without an answer to those questions as to whether we in our sectors are serious, whether we should be talking together, extension work coordinated together, yes, sir. equipment available rationalized together. If we are not doing that, and if we are not telling the government shape up or ship out, this conference is a waste.